Hi everyone, uh, this will be the first video of 2023. Uh, I'm going to be uh, showing you a different graph mapper that I found uh, that could be useful for uh, Grasshopper. Um, this is actually uh, called Riched Graph Mapper, which is, um, I don't know if you know this tool, um, but it allows you to interpolate um, some numeric values using graphs and uh, it's developed by Daniel Gonzalez Abalde and this allows you to add more points, control points to uh, graph definitions and it's free and available on Foot for Rhino. So um, I'm going to show you quickly how uh, you can utilize it and uh, what you can do with it um, and then we will um, basically use it for a more complex investigation in another video. Um, but to begin, uh, we are going to actually create um, a simple formal exercise. Uh, so um, let's say that we want to construct a series of points. So I'm going to create a vertical array of points. And let's increase their number. So we want to have a total of 100 points. And I'm going to create a circle in each one of those. And uh, let's actually make this uh, 50. And I'm going to change their interval to be three. So these are our circles. And I want to control the radii of these circles with a graph mapper. So um, by default, the graph mapper um, looks something like this. So you can have a bunch of predetermined uh, graph types, let's call uh, Bezier as one of those. And the way graph mappers work is basically you supply um, some values in the xy direction, um, which is determined by this interval of 0 and 1. And it gives you correlating information in the y direction. So this graph reads uh, like a function of x and y. And we are going to um, do this by dividing the range in the x domain uh, using range. Um, we can also do range for the z values of the points. The difference here is that when I feed in the same numbers here, we get uh, 50 points in our, in our array, but we get 51 points because the range uh, basically subdivides a, a determined interval. So what I want to do is create an expression here, call it x minus 1. So we get uh, 50 values total, and those will give me corresponding y values. And I can use the y value here as a percentage and multiply it with some coefficient. So let's add some multiplication. And let's say we want to have the maximum radius value to be 100. So when I supply this, you can see that this graph kind of controls the section of these values, right? So that's uh, basically how we can control our form. So if I loft this, uh, this is the geometry we can achieve. We can also uh, control the numbers here, their interval, if you want to use less values to determine this permitic shape. And this controls the, um, the section of the profile, actually. So you can see that uh, we can change um, this to be something else. This is um, basically a sine function. You can see that it's also controlling the section. Um, now this is our default example for the graph mapper. And um, for the rich graph mapper, what happens is we get uh, more data points, essentially. Um, so um, it takes input values, a source domain, and a target domain, which basically works similar to this graph mapper. So if I were to supply this range here and choose, um, let's say, the sine summation, we're going to get to additional values here too. But uh, this gives me the same um, uh, same calculation, right? So this uh, almost works like uh, the sine summation function here. And then I can use this instead. Now, different to graph mapper that has a few um, generic graph types here. The rich graph mapper has interpolated and polyline graphs that can take in more control points. 
Uh, it also has this Bezier 2 function, which basically allows you to also have a control vertex uh, and a tangent in the middle. So um, uh, I thought this was kind of a nice tool in controlling um, the profile any way you want. So this would be, um, uh, this would basically give you heightened control over uh, these sorts of parametric shapes that you want to create. Uh, you can also look at um, the interpolated points, for instance, let's try interpolated 6. Uh, this actually gives us uh, kind of uh, these control points. Uh, I'm wondering if we can reduce the number of control points if we move to 4. This almost behaves like um, the Bezier, right? So this will uh, basically give us um, some more heightened control. And for those of you who haven't um, discovered this, I also came across this when I was looking at Foot4 Rhino. Um, this will be, I think, a useful tool to investigate. Um, it also has this uh, polyline function that creates this sharp uh, changes between the profiles. Uh, let's actually make this loft to be uh, following straight sections uh, rather than normal. Uh, that will actually create uh, a polyline shape as well. So you can see that we can control um, the shapes parametrically this way, and you can control the number of uh, control points and the graph types and see how those two are correlated. Um, so I'm going to do another video uh, with this rich graph mapper um, to dem demonstrate that you can actually develop a lot more surfacing techniques and formal investigations. It will be kind of building up on this uh, type of technique. So if you're interested in learning more about this, um, uh, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. And uh, if you turn on notifications, you'll get, um, uh, you'll get basically informed about when the next video is going to be released. And um, thank you for your support and I'll follow you up uh, with the next video. Uh, take care.